Welcome back to the third installment of uh, Project Smoke. Um, I want to go over what I did last. I did the uh, lid trim, the door trim here, all the way around, all four corners. What I did was, is I installed all the inch and a quarter flat flat bar, all the way around first, everywhere, and I used as many vice grips as I could. When you're going to do your edges on this edge here and on this one here, you want to measure from the very bottom of the of the of the door all the way up to the top on both sides and, and cut that piece just a few inches longer. Wrap it around your tank. Wrap it all around your tank and you get a nice um, curve to a natural what it should be. Um, so once you do that, you cut your sides. I cut them in 45s. You don't have to do them in 45s like I did here. And I welded every every six inches. I did a two inch weld on, on on all the corners, of course, and every six inches. Make sure you're square and plumb all around. Once you got that all put together and welded, I went ahead and did a handle. I just used a slag hammer. I just sacrificed one of my better ones and uh, I bent it into a 90 degree angle and I welded it on. That way I have something to hang on to when I'm pulling it on and off while I'm working on it. You can see it's half of it is on on the on the lid and half of it will be resting on the tank itself all around. Make sure you're plumb and square everywhere. That way you get a nice uh, fit. You don't have to do 45s like I said. You can just come out short and square cuts and just square cut as well. Uh, it just looks more uniform when you do a 45. I painted it as well just to reduce the glare on uh, on it while I'm while I'm filming. You could use anything you like also for a handle. Um, for example, you could use a um, half inch uh, solid square stock and uh, cut yourself a square for a handle. Or you could use a half inch round stock, heat it up and bend it to make uh, handles. Like I did here. This is 3 8 uh, square uh, round stock. I just bent it and uh, made a handle out of them. Another example is this uh, half inch um, square steel, cut them, cut them in 45s and just make yourself a handle. I opted to use a slag hammer here. I just cut it short right at the very tip and went for it. Let's go over hinges, what I did with these hinges. This is what I did. From the edge of my cutout here, same on this side, edge of that cutout, I measured three inches from here on center for my two by two from end to center on my uh, hinge. And that's three inches there, same thing on the other side, three inches. For my cutout here, back this way, for my two inch piece of half inch pipe, one inch on center. Welded one side on, on the opposite end. I welded that side on with the lid on. So I weld this side back here. Then I'll go ahead and weld the front end right here. Once that's in place, so I'm square and plumb. Make sure you're straight. Went ahead and went on this side. Welded on the back end. Tacked right here. And I, I tested for uh, for squareness and make sure it was going to work. Once it, once it all worked. Go ahead and fill it in all the way through here and fill it in all the way on this side here. Just weld it all through. Lift your lid open and you want to weld in here. Give, give yourself a nice little bead of weld in here. There's the inlets I was talking about last video um, for the compressor. Just uh, I grinded them down. I just I just grinded them down and, and it worked out well with this. Uh, with this inch and a quarter flats, flat bar, covered them up just enough for it good. Uh, I want to go over some material we're going to be using for uh, next uh, next phase of this cooker here. Um, next thing I'm going to be working on is I'm going to work on the inside here. I want to work on the slide out tray. What we're going to be using is inch and a half angle iron. 
just inch and a half by um, eighth inch thick angle iron. We're going to be using one inch by eighth inch square tubing and we're going to be using number nine uh, expanded uh, sheet metal. What, you, what tools are we going to be needing? Our speed square, a tape measure, a marker, and a torpedo level. Slag hammer to cut your uh, to uh, break down your slag on your on your welds. Of course, you're going to use your grinders, uh, to clean up your metal, whatnot. Um, the way I do my slide out trays is I'll cut myself my my angle iron, and I'll make sure it's tight. I get a tight fit just like that um, it's a little long but I'll, I'm gonna cut it down to size sometimes you have to cut the corner off on this end here so it'll fit just right right there put your speed square on both sides and your torpedo level and make sure you're level weld them on you're gonna do that you're gonna repeat that on the other side as well when you're framing in for your for your tray, you don't have to. You could just cut yourself a piece of uh, sheet metal, measure from one end to one end on your uh, angle iron, and just place the rack in there. What I do is I'll frame with a one-inch tubing, just like that there, and then uh, I'll come along this side as well, so it'll be just a complete square. I also cut that on 45s and it's just all 45 all the way across for a clean uniform look. <clears throat> you want to give yourself at least a quarter to half inch on each side when you frame yourself as well so when you slide out your tray it, it, it works out good. Um, you, have, you have room on each side to play with. Make sure you're plumb and square on, on each side on both sides that we don't have any problems sliding in and out. Uh, a couple more things I wanted to mention um, for this handle. Like I said, you could use anything you like, um, any kind of iron that's weldable, uh, horseshoe. Uh, get, get creative, just whatever you find is is, uh, is good. I'm not sure what I want to do for a counterbalance. I'm thinking I want to use some, uh, some, uh, some tubing like that and uh, with a crossbar as a counterweight so when I open it it'll stay open that'll be next video um, and I wanted to go over um, drilling for the temperature gauge as well you're going to start off with your smallest bit that you can find as far as your temperature gauge I already have mine it's going to be a 3 8 uh, I need a 3 8 uh, hole so you start off with your smallest uh, drill bit and you just work your way up and it, and it should go right through pretty easily so there it is, um, worked out well. Lid fits on nice and tight and uh, looks good. I'm liking what we're, I'm liking what we're uh, coming up with right now. There it is.